Welcome back my friends to the Academy. In this video, we're designing an acid inspired poster and merch concept for Post Malone. Whether you're a beginner or an experienced designer, you'll be able to follow along as I go into detail on the specific methods I use in Photoshop and Illustrator to create this design. We'll start off in Adobe Illustrator where I'll be building the framework for this design. Are you guys ready? Let's go. I really love using Adobe Illustrator and I don't think I use it enough on this channel. And a lot of you really love my Adobe Illustrator video. So we're gonna start using it a little bit more. But today I'm just focusing on building the framework, like I said in the beginning of this video, for this Post Malone design. I really love building out shapes and different forms in Adobe Illustrator because it's just so much easier, especially with the Shape Builder tool. Adobe Illustrator is amazing because when you select a shape, you can round the corners. You'll see these white little dots appear when you use the direct selection tool and you can just basically select any corner and round the corner really fast. And you can just have like the fastest workflow doing it this way. There we have a window shape in seconds. And that's exactly why Illustrator is kind of the goat when it comes to creating uh, complex shapes, simple shapes, all those good things besides it being a vector program, of course. Trust me, it is crazy what you can do with one shape. I've literally only used the rectangle tool so far, and now I'm using some circles, as you can see, to use uh, them as like sort of a cutout, kind of like a cookie cutter, right? I'm just using them to kind of stamp out that shape. You could do this two di different ways. You could use the Pathfinder options, or you could use the Shape Builder tool, which I love using. I went into some crazy, territory here and I was doing some weird stuff with the shape and it didn't end up working out but I still wanted to show it to you guys I found some information about Post Malone and his album and stuff like that. So I copied and pasted it inside of Adobe Illustrator. And uh, I, I don't know, something about it, I didn't like it. So I used it sort of as a placeholder. And I knew that I wanted to put Reputation um, at the bottom because that's one of his songs that I really love. It's honestly such a great track. So I knew that I wanted this song or this um, this design to be uh, centered around reputation. Reputation, God, that's such a weird word for me right now. And I found a lot of inspiration on Pinterest, um, especially with like brutalism and acid posters. There was so much great stuff on there. And one particular design that I cannot find now for some reason, um, if I do find it, I'll let you guys know, but uh, it had this overlapping text element, right? Mixed with different fonts. So it had like calligraphy mixed with a normal um, sans serif style font. And I really liked that contrast. So I ended up doing the same exact thing um, right here. And I think it ended up looking really good. I don't think this design would be as strong without this element added. Um, so yeah, like you guys just try things out because you never know what will actually make a design or break it um, until you try it. So if it doesn't look good, delete it, start over. So you guys can actually see my font at the very top. I'm using Druic Wide Bold. And then we're using Androgy today for the cursive style font. Now this one, I'm probably butchering the name too, but uh, I liked it. I, I really liked the P and the M. I think they look really strong. So I really just wanted them to be a stroke though. I didn't want it to be a solid fill font. I really like the contrast that I have here with the two fonts.
don't forget guys, I have a master design course that's available right now for pre-order. It's coming this April, late April, and me and my uh, friend Zach are just teaching everything we know about merch design, and you guys will learn so much. So if you guys really wanna deep dive and take your career to the next level, you definitely wanna get in right now at the discounted price. Link is in the bio. I'm gonna let this part play out so you guys can see exactly what I'm doing. I don't wanna speed it up too much, so um, you guys can enjoy this part, and I'll see you in the next part where we dive into Photoshop.
take a quick break to shout out our sponsor of this video, Aplik. If you haven't heard of Aplik, you're missing out. They are one of the best print-on-demand companies in the game. They offer things like private labeling and your favorite brands to print on. And the best part about it is there's no monthly fees. Simply integrate them with your favorite e-commerce stores such as Shopify, which is one that I love to use, and you can start selling in minutes. And the money that you save by not having a monthly subscription, you can use for test prints. Check them out on YouTube and in the links in the description below. Back to the video. Now we're in Photoshop and I just copied my framework from Illustrator and pasted it inside of this new document in Photoshop, which is 15 inches by 18 inches, 300 resolution. I will be using a displacement map plugin by Black Market. It's called Reactor, and they didn't sponsor this video or anything like that, but I do love their products and I use them all the time. With the click of a button, you can apply displacement maps directly from photos online, like unsplash.com, and it's just super cool. And um, I think it costs around 35 bucks, but it's worth every single penny. With that applied, what I'm going to do now is use my magic wand tool to select the different black areas that I have, which I created again in Adobe Illustrator. And what I'm doing is I want to section these off so I can use them as clipping masks or even use them as a layer mask. Although we don't have to separate them, it just makes it much easier to manage my layers this way. And again, add my photos to each uh, shape that I want to add it to. Um, instead of having to make selections along the way, it just makes things way harder. So pay attention to my layers palette. We'll zoom in on it right now so you can see it. As you can see, I have left, right, and then center. Everything's already separated, ready to go, but I still have my base frame intact in case I need it. The great thing about my base layer, which is my main frame layer, is that it's a smart object. So every smart filter I add to it, it saves it below the layer as a smart filter. I made a folder on my computer where I just stored all the Post Malone photos that I found online, and I used a uh, website, I think I've talked about this before, it's called Click Magic, and it just basically deletes the background for you and uh, makes it so much easier because if you do this stuff manually, it can take hours and I just did not want to take hours to do this. So I ended up using Click Magic, and uh, it worked like a charm. I already have most of my images clipped to the proper shape, as you can see on my layers palette, and I just applied a quick filter gallery effect to the center photo of Post Malone. And I usually use the same exact thing every time. I use stamp and grain, and you just mess with the settings until you get the desired results. So there's really no formula. All photos are going to change because of the lighting and, you know, different information on those photos themselves. Like even the pixels of the camera that shot that photo can affect this, uh, this filter gallery. So you definitely want to, um, you kind of use your own judgment on this. Another trick that I like to use is I go up to image adjustments and shadow and highlights. And I use this to bring out the shadows, obviously that's why it's called shadows and highlights. And you can also mute the highlights, which means like you can dial them back a little bit. If they're blown out, you're going to lose a lot of detail with the stamp effect in filter gallery. So I do this first most of the time if the shadows in my images are just so harsh. And sometimes I'll even use camera raw filter as you can see. So those are two different ways of doing it. And uh, either one will work. Um, I actually kind of prefer camera raw filter a little bit more. Um, but yeah, like you use whatever works for you. Um, but yeah, as you can see, like the image is so much more flat and that makes this effect look a million times better. Try that out and do a before and after and you'll see a crazy difference. Like there's so much more information in the photo and details of the photo where the shadows were basically just completely black. You'll actually see detail in now and the highlights will have more grain versus before where they're just pure white. And uh, that's kind of the goal here is to try to create a balanced image so you get all the details. Now I'm just doing this for every single photo that I have and placing them where I want them. And that's pretty much it, honestly, guys. There's really nothing more to it. I wish. I can, you know, give you this crazy explanation of why this is this way. But in all honesty, it's all experimentation. And um, if you don't experiment, you're never going to know. So I always say try something, even if you don't think it's going to work and um, see at the end if you like it. If you don't, you can always delete it and go back.
lot of empty space on the top left of the frame shape and I did not like that. So I went back to Adobe Illustrator and just made a circle and typed some text around it. And honestly, I didn't even know what to type here. I just kind of made it up as I went along with it and it ended up working out. But uh, I knew there was something missing right there and it needed some sort of other element. Now, if I can go back, I probably would put some sort of pattern inside of that, that uh, window shape. Um, which is the center shape but uh yeah I'm, I'm still happy with this design don't get me wrong i just feel like i probably could have done more right there not not a big deal obviously but uh yeah experiment like i keep saying and uh you'll come up with something that you were surprised with trust me all that was left to do was copy and paste it in photoshop and invert it because it was obviously black on black and you don't want that so i ended up inverting it in order to make it white but then i thought you know this would be kind of cool if when it hits the black area it turns white but if it hits the white area it turns black Black. and I ended up creating two different layers or like duplicating the the circle text and um, basically masking out one half of it if that makes sense so whatever's touching the frame will change color essentially and uh, this is the effect I came up with and let me know what you think about it I thought it looked pretty cool so I was pretty happy with it so after recording this entire video I found out that I misspelled toothache I, it was just a mistake, so I ended up fixing it, and I'm so happy I did because I think I ended up posting the design on Instagram and then having to delete it to go back and fix my mistake. So spell check everything, guys. Trust me, you need to spell check everything because uh, you don't want to send stuff like this to a client and it's misspelled, which never happens to me, but um, when I'm making these videos, I have to knock them out pretty quick, so sometimes I do make mistakes, but uh, something to note. I ended up grouping all of my layers together and adding a gradient map clipped to that group. And this allowed me to basically choose any color I want for all of the tones in the image. In this case, we have two, we have black and white. So I only need two colors and it was just really easy to do it this way. If you want a detailed explanation, I do have my master merch design course dropping April and you can pre-order it right now. Link is in the description below. And without further ado, here is the final design mocked up on two long sleeve tees as well as a poster. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. And don't forget my master merch design course drops this April. You don't want to miss it. You can sign up using the link in the description below. And shout out to Aplique for sponsoring this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.